Hi, Debbie here, and today I just had to pull out my watercolours. If you've been following along with me recently, you'll know how much I've enjoyed watercolour in this past year. And when I looked back, I couldn't believe it's been over a month since I painted. I rummaged through my stamp sets and pulled out a favourite. I've used the beautiful flower set from Simon Says Stamp before, and I'll link to that in the description. However, the matching dies got released at a later date, and I've not had the chance yet to pull out the stamps and dies and use those together. That was my vague excuse anyway for wanting to get my paints out and to colour this gorgeous bouquet again. I like to use Archer's Cold Press Watercolour Card. This has a lovely texture to it that makes painting on it a dream. However, the texture does make it a bit tricky to get a clear stamped impression if you're using a black ink and then watercolouring. However, I like to stamp with antique linen distress ink and then paint in a no-line style. This distress ink is light in colour and water reactive too, so as you paint the, the lines blend in and you get a lovely no-line watercoloured look. I laid out the large bouquet image and the three individual flowers on the Archer's Cold Press card and stamped them a few times in the antique linen distress ink until I had a clear impression to colour. I then taped the piece of card to a board with blue painter's tape and started to paint. I used a variety of Daniel Swift watercolours, which I'll list in the description below, along with the other supplies I used today to make this card. I took the painting slow to enjoy myself, with various interruptions for parcel deliveries and children etc. This card took me over two hours to complete. However, I love to paint and find it very therapeutic, and so I didn't mind the time passing. I guess with a time intensive card such as this, I will just make sure to send it to someone who will appreciate it. I'm a tentative painter and so I start with light layers of colour and build up slowly, bit by bit adding more layers. This process is sometimes called glazing, with the additional layers allowing the initial layers to show too. The joy with transparent watercolours is that each layer works with the others to form the overall colour. Also, it's much easier to add more layers and deeper colours than it is to try and lift them and take them away if you've gone in with a heavy hand. I'll play some music shortly while I continue to paint, but I did want to mention that I added more details to the large bouquet, whereas when I painted the individual flowers, I kept things very loose and to a certain extent indistinct. The reason for that is that I wanted to tuck these flowers behind the main bouquet and I felt that a looser style would suit these flowers and give them the appearance of being slightly out of focus as you would get with when the eye is concentrating on the main focal point. With this in mind I also kept the painting of these flowers lighter. Things appear paler the further away they are from you. I'm hoping this looser paler painting of these flowers means that they will support the focal point when tucked behind the main bouquet, but won't compete with it. I'll play some music now while I finish the painting and I'll be back shortly.
bulk of the watercolouring, I added touches of white gouache to bring in some highlights. Gouache is an opaque watercolour and so these white dots I'm adding here, they will show up even if they're painted over a dark colour. Having finished with the gouache, I then took my favourite solution of Perfect Pearls. This is a scoop of Perfect Pearls in a mini mister, topped up with water and given a good shape before using the tube from the mister to splatter the sparkly mixture over the painting. I also added some splatter from leftover paint too and then dried everything with a heat tool. I then took the matching beautiful flowers dies and held them in place with washi tape before running them through my die cutting machine. With my spray of die cut flowers coming together nicely, I took another piece of Archer's cold press watercolour card to create a loose watercolour background on which to mount them. I taped the piece to a board and thoroughly wet it before bringing in a warm yellow and then a pinky coral. The colours easily move and mix together on the wet surface to create a soft background. I used a heat tool to speed up the drying process and a paper towel to sop up extra colour and keep the background light and airy. I then went in with a second layer before splattering the background liberally with leftover paint, white gouache and more of the Perfect Pearls mix. I kept bringing in the flowers to make sure I had enough colour and splatter where I wanted it and then dried the piece a final time. I trimmed the background to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches and then started arranging the flowers on the panel. I realised I wanted a few more leaf sprigs and so turned to the Beautiful Flowers 2 set which has a few options and also the matching dies too. I stamped and watercoloured a leaf, splattering liberally as before and then die cut with a matching die. I added the watercolour background panel to a Desert Storm card base cut from £100 weight and sized to be 4.5 by 5 and 3 quarters which is just slightly larger than an A2 card base. I arranged the die cut images on the card front and kept the individual pieces in place with foam tape. And then to add more dimension, I added a double layer of foam tape to raise the main focal point slightly. I also decided on adding another leaf sprig to the arrangement, so went back and stamped, watercolored and die cut that before adding it to the card. I then scattered around a few sequins and kept them in place with Gina K Connect glue. I must admit that the sentiment for this card was a bit of an afterthought. I was so invested in the watercolouring that really the sentiment was the last thing on my mind. However, when I got to this point, I realised I needed to add something. And when I looked at the options in the Beautiful Flowers set, I picked the birthday greeting, as I said, more birthday cards than anything else. I treated a piece of slate card with an anti-static powder bag and then stamped the sentiment in clear embossing ink before sprinkling with white embossing powder and heat setting. I trimmed the piece to a banner and then added to the card with foam adhesive. I also wound a little silver thread around my fingers and added that under the sentiment banner too for added interest. And that completes this no line watercoloured floral birthday card. Sure it was a little labour intensive but equally it was so fun to make and I thoroughly enjoyed reacquainting myself with my watercolours. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at linedutydesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today. And if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.